Hey tea heads, this is Don from Mayleaf. In this video, why does more leaf make better tea? In this video, I'm going to be explaining how the amount of leaf that you use affects the quality of your brews. If at any point in time you enjoy this video, then make sure you hit it with a like. And if you're not following us on all of our socials yet, then go click those buttons. This is it, third part in our Brewing Masterclass series. If you've not watched the first two, I'll put links in the description below. In these videos, we go geeky, so be prepared. We go very geeky into understanding how all of the different parameters affect the quality of the tea that you produce. The aim of this series is to test all the theories, let's not assume that they're all correct, test all the theories, learn together, and by the end of it, my pledge to you is that you're gonna come out of it as a gong fu brewing master for free. You're gonna know how to brew just by looking at the leaves. And in this video, we're doing probably one of the most important definers of gong fu brewing, the leaf to water ratio. In other words, how much leaf you are using per 100 mil of water. It is the key definer for Gong Fu Brewing. For those of you who don't know what Gong Fu Brewing is, again, I'll put a link in the description below describing Gong Fu Brewing, but essentially it is one of the best ways to get rich and flavorful extractions from your tea leaves. And as I said, one of the key markers for that is that you brew a large leaf to water ratio. In other words, you shrink the size of the tea wear down to small volumes and you use a lot of leaf. But why is that? Does it make a difference? Is it worth you doing? You've probably seen me brew in other videos where I stuff the guy one full of leaves. Am I just trying to sell you more tea by showing you that you should use a lot or does it make a difference? Let's first do a quick recap on our first two episodes. The first episode we talked about how temperature affects the experience of your tea and we came to the following conclusions that as you increase temperature you increase the bitterness that is extracted, you increase the associated astringency, however you have a more structured tea with a longer finish and the taste EQ tends to be a little bit more in those basier notes. What do I mean by that? Well, for me, higher aromatics are aromatics that are very bright, very light, very zesty, whereas basic aromatics tend to be more of those woodier, earthier notes. It is a very kind of conceptual idea, but I hope that it makes some sense to you when you are drinking your teas. In the second episode, we focused on how the length of brewing time affects the quality of the tea. And we came to the following conclusions. We said that longer brewing made tea that is more viscous, in other words, thicker, again, has more of those base aromatics, less of the high, bright EQ aromatics makes a stronger tea. However, again, increases the bitterness, increases the astringency, and you get a longer and more structured finish. So those were the conclusions that we came up with from our first two episodes. So we've talked about brewing temperature. We've talked about brewing time. The third most important key decision that you guys have to make when you're brewing your tea is the amount of leaf you use. In other words, the leaf to water ratio. And this can be a bit deceptive. In front of me, I have a Huang Pian uh, Pua tea and I have Gyokuro from Japan, a green tea. These are both five grams of tea. So you can see if you're judging the amount of leaf that you're using by volume, you can be very easily deceived. This obviously looks like a lot more leaf than this one, but I can assure you that it is five grams. And to prove that point, I have ground down the same amount of the Huang Pian and the Gyokuro, so you can see when you take away all of the air that's hiding in and amongst these leaves, you start to get a more accurate picture of the difference. And you can see that there is a difference, but the difference is hardly as pronounced as it seems when you look at the volumes of the leaves. You can see that's five grams of Gyokuro ground up and five grams of Huang Pian. So it's very important then when you're, that when you're talking about leaf to water ratio, that you're focused on the amount of grams of the leaf. Now, 
as you start to become more experienced in Gong Fu Brewing, you start to be able to eyeball, you start to say, oh, well, I know this is a Huang Pian, I know it's very straggly large leaves, and therefore there's gonna be a lot of air, and it's gonna look like a lot more leaf. But at the beginning, when you're starting out brewing, I would highly recommend getting yourself a very cheap, accurate scale, and that will really help you dial in your parameters. Okay, so you can see here the deception that can happen with the volume of leaf. And I also have to say that when we talk about grams per 100 mil of water, that is also quite deceiving too. Because obviously, the amount of water that you put in a Gai Wan, if it's empty, may be 100 mil or a teapot or any vessel that you're brewing in. I just tend to brew more in Gai Wans. So if you fill up, it might be 100 mil. But once you put those leaves in, it's going to be less, right? Because obviously the volume of the leaf is taking up volume in the vessel itself. And so you're going to get less water. And the volume that the leaf takes up, you can see this is going to take up less volume than this one, will mean that if I take 100 mil Gai Wan and I brew and I fill to the brim with this Gyokuro compared to this Huang Pian, then when I pour out, I will have less liquor in this tea because this takes up more volume in your Gai Wan teapot, etc. And so it would be even more accurate if instead of using the volume of water, you used weight. Generally, there or thereabouts, one milliliter of water equals one gram of water. So when we're doing these tests, we are actually weighing the amount of water that we are using. Now again, once you start to get into brewing, you don't have to get so geeky. This is all about really just focusing in on those minor details, those minute details, to see how they affect the uh, overall experience. But once you get into it and you have your own experience, I'm not expecting you to pull out scales and weigh the amount of water that you uh, use. You can, of course, but I certainly don't do that. Right, so now we need to move on to our first experiment. What I've got here is a Gong Fu amount that I would recommend for green coil. This is Bilo Chen. It's a high quality green tea, really one of those amazing Chinese green teas, full of complexity, full of bright notes, full of dark notes, full of umami, full of sweetness. It's a really fascinating tea. The reason why I've picked this tea is because in my opinion, if you don't brew it Gong Fu style, there's not much point in you buying it, to be honest with you. Really, you need to experience this Gong Fu style. Let me show you what I'm brewing it up against. So this is 3.5 grams here. And this one here is 0 0.9 grams. So I've taken a quarter of the amount. This is there or there about a quarter of this amount. We're gonna be brewing these up for the same amount of time. And then in case you guys out there are wondering, well, what happens if you just brew it four times as long? Is that gonna make um, an equivalent brew? We're gonna do just that. We are going to brew this 0 0.9 grams of tea four times as long. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly rinse these leaves, first of all, in 85 degree water, that's 185 Fahrenheit. Give them a quick rinse just to open them up. And then I'm gonna be taking the 3.5 grams of tea. I'm gonna be brewing that for 15 seconds. I'm gonna be taking one of the 0 0.9 grams of tea. I'm gonna be brewing that for 15 seconds so that we can do a like for like comparison. And then I'm gonna be taking the other 0 0.9 grams and I'm gonna be brewing that for one minute. And then we'll return and we'll give them a taste. Here are the results. This one here is the 3.5 grams at 15 uh, seconds with 100 grams of water. All of these used 100 grams of water. I actually weighed the amount of water so that it is accurate. So this is there or thereabouts Gong Fu style brewing. This one here is the 0.9 grams for 15 seconds. So the same brewing time. So we're keeping all the parameters the same between these except for the amount of leaf. And this one here is our time corrected brew. This is 0 0.9 grams, but for one minute. So four times the amount of uh, brewing time, 
because it is a quarter of the amount of leaf. Now I know that you can say that that's not a linear relationship, but that's a whole other discussion and a whole other bit of experimentation. But you see the point here. I'm trying to make the uh, brews equivalent by extending the amount of brewing time. So this is the time corrected. All right, so let's start off with talking about viscosity, thickness of the tea liquor. Let's go with the 15 second, 0.9. Very, very thin, very, very watery, nothing. Um, there is some thickness, but it's very, very thin. Compared to the Gong Fu, a world of difference, much, much thicker, a lot more texture, body in the mouth. Let's compare it to the time corrected one in between. So what we're establishing here is that when you increase the amount of leaf to water ratio, you are going to increase the viscosity of the tea. And when you time correct it, it's going to make a difference. So as we established in the last video, the longer you brew is going to increase viscosity, but it didn't even manage to match this one. This is a minute brew versus 15 seconds. So you see the power of the amount of leaf. Let's move on and let's talk about the strength of flavor. That's something we're gonna be talking about a bit later on. Let's again start with the 15 second brew. There is some flavor there. It's very, very weak. Very, very weak indeed compared to this one. Well, I can already tell you. A lot more strength of flavor, just bursting with grassiness, I'm getting a little bit of umami, I'm getting a bit brothiness in the taste. I'm also getting those high notes of elderflower and um, cut grass and um, a little bit of spinach, spinach pastries, the warm notes of, sp of baked spinach pastries, delicious. So a lot more strength of flavor. Now, interesting, let's see what the strength comparison is between this one here and this one here. This is four times the brewing length, so you'd expect the strength to be there or thereabout similar. And what I'm trying not to focus on is the type of flavor, in other words, the balance of the flavor, because that is going to be different, but just the overall strength of the liquor. And I would say that this is not as strong as this one, but certainly that extra length of brewing has started to kind of mimic it. I would say that they are similar, but the Gong Fu still comes up trumps. Let's talk about the taste, right? The actual EQ balance of the taste. Very little going on here, but it's quite bright. I taste a lot of the bright notes of it. I'm getting those cut grass notes much more in that one just as a predominance compared to the Gong Fu. I'm getting tons and tons of those top notes really bright aromatics. As I said, I'm getting some of the warmth of those kind of pastry notes, but very, very bright compared to this one here. So the extended brewing time has a definite marked difference in the EQ. This is definitely more bassy. I get more of the woody notes. I get more of the papery notes in the tea. It's just less bright, it's less singing, which is why as I said before, this tea, this, gong, this uh, green coil or Jiangsu Bilo Chen, I really think that if you don't brew it Gong Fu style, you're missing out so much in terms of the flavor. Now, let's move on to the richness of the tea. How does that differ from strength? We'll talk about that a little bit later, but let's just talk about richness. You can see the difference in the color of the liquors. Definitely a lot more a vibrancy of color, a lot richer color, a lot more saturated the color, and certainly a different texture look in the color of the liquor. So what I get here is definition. I can taste everything. It's it's, it's in my face. I get all of the flavor notes. It's very rich in terms, of its, in terms of its experience. Compare that to the 15 seconds, if I have to. Next to no richness to it at all. Just some vague flavor, but next to no richness. And this one here is the same. 
This is the key part here. More leaf will mean richer tea. Again, we'll talk about that in a second. Let's just keep going through this because I'm concerned that these teas are going to change as I talk and the air reacts with them. So finally, we're going to talk about finish. I should start actually with this one here. Very, very short. As I said, very thin in texture, very short in finish, no structure. I'm not getting much coming out afterwards. Very, very short, very, very clean. Nothing to write home about. Extended brewing time. Yes, longer finish. I get more dryness, I'm getting more astringency. I'm getting a little bit more juiciness coming out from the sides of my tongue. Certainly more physical reaction going on with the extended brewing time compared with the Gong Fu style, which the moment it hits my tongue, I'm getting instant physicality. A lot more finish on this one. So even though length of brewing time will extend the finish, it won't be as much as with the Gong Fu brewing. Okay, so let's just try to come up with some quick conclusions here. So if you compare the leaf to water ratio and keep all the variables the same, in other words, the brewing time the same, then you're gonna create a tea which is higher in viscosity, which is higher in strength, which is higher in richness, which has a similar taste EQ, but a longer finish. And if you time correct the brewing so that you extend the length of brewing for smaller amount of leaves, the Gong Fu star brewing, the larger leaf to water ratio, still comes up trumps in terms of viscosity, in terms of strength, in terms of richness, in terms of finish, and the taste EQ is a lot more brighter compared to that longer brewing time. So what is going on here and how can we apply these conclusions to a model of brewing that you can take forward? In my previous masterclass, I introduced you to a model to help you to visualize the brewing process in action. And if you can visualize this model, it's gonna really help you through future masterclasses. I'm gonna give you a quick recap, and I have to say that there has been one change to the model, so if you watch the previous masterclass, then please pay attention because I have made a change. Right, here it is. This is the model, imagine a ramp. Okay, and imagine that ramp is divided up into lanes, and those lanes are divided by a small wall, so anything rolling down, each lane cannot cross over into other lanes. Imagine halfway up that ramp is a set of gates running across all of the lanes. At the bottom of the ramp is another set of gates running across all of those lanes. Below the bottom gates is a collecting trough, right? The collecting trough represents the uh, collection of all of the compounds that you're going to extract and is going to result in your final tea that you are drinking. Right, whenever you load up your tea vessel, guy one, teapot, whatever, with leaves, you're loading the vessel up with chemical compounds that are ready to be extracted. These chemical compounds, I'm in this model, I'm um, making the analogy that these are marbles. So if you imagine when you load up your vessel, you're loading above the top gate in the lanes, you're loading them up with marbles, right? Each chemical compound is a different marble. You can imagine it like color-coded red, green, blue, etc. And each lane is reserved for an individual type. So let's say the red marbles are in lane one, the green marbles are in lane two, the blue marbles are in lane three, etc., etc. So they're sitting, waiting, in dry leaf, waiting to be extracted. So when you hit the leaves with water, what you're doing is you're opening the gates, okay? So these marbles are gonna start to move down the ramp and eventually be collected in the water, extracted in the water, which is represented by the tea liquor that is your collecting trough below the bottom gate. Now, different chemical compounds have different rates of extraction. And so what I'm asking you to do is imagine that the marbles have different shapes. So some of the marbles are spherical, so they're very easily extracted. They're gonna roll down that ramp, no matter what the angle, they're gonna roll down that ramp very, very easily. 
Others are going to be a little bit more irregular and there are going to be some that are very irregular that take a lot of time and a lot of uh, inclination, angle, in order for them to make it into the collecting trough. Okay, I hope you're with me so far. So the brewing time is represented by how long you leave the gates open. So how long the, the, the uh, collecting of those marbles takes, that is your brewing time. The temperature, here's the difference guys from the previous uh, model, the temperature is related to the inclination. In the previous model, I said it was related to the friction of the surface. And I was going to do something else for inclination, which will be in future masterclasses. But the more I think about it, the more I think it's going to be simpler for you to think of temperature in terms of inclination. So obviously, if you have a very shallow inclination, that's going to extract much more slowly. And that is if you are brewing cooler. The hotter you brew, the steeper the inclination. So even if you have marbles that are quite irregular, they are gonna still make it through the bottom gate into the collecting trough below, right? So the temperature is the inclination, the angle of inclination of the ramp. So you've got brewing time, how long the gates are open for, and temperature is inclination. What is leaf to water ratio? So how can we now bring this masterclass and apply it to that model? Well, if you imagine, just for simplicity's sake, that one tea leaf uh, has 10 lanes. So there's 10 different marbles, 10 different compounds that need to be extracted, okay? If you double the amount of leaves, then you are adding more lanes onto the ramp. So instead of just one lane of red marbles, now you have two lanes of red marbles two lanes of green marbles, two lanes of yellow marbles, etc. So as you increase the leaf to water ratio, you are increasing the amount of lanes. Right. How does that apply to what we've come up with here in terms of richness, strength, viscosity, etc.? Okay. So when you are uh, opening those gates and the marbles are coming down, Assuming you are keeping the same temperature, which means same inclination, and you are keeping the same brewing time, then obviously, if you, let's say the brewing time is 10 seconds, so you're opening the gates for 10 seconds and then closing them after 10 seconds. If you have more lanes, you are gonna extract more marbles. More marbles are gonna end up in that collecting trough, right? More marbles means more chemical compounds in your tea, which means that you're going to have a stronger tasting tea, right? More marbles equals stronger. Okay, now what happens in the case of this one here where I've had less leaf, but I've brewed it for longer? Okay, so imagine the model now. So in this Gong Fu style, I have, let's say, a hundred lanes, right? Um, and the brewing time was 15 seconds. So I've collected X amount of marbles. Let's call it a thousand marbles, just for simplicity. With this one here, I have less lanes. I've got 25 lanes instead of 100 lanes, right? But I'm leaving the gates open for four times the amount of time, okay? So I'm leaving them open for a minute. So my uh, estimation here is that I will still collect there or thereabouts a thousand marbles, right? But they are going to be different marbles, okay? Because now you've given more time for those irregular marbles to make it out of the gate, right? So this is how the same amount of marbles, let's say we collected a thousand marbles in the Gong Fu style and a thousand marbles in uh, this extended brewing time, then those thousand marbles will equate to similar there or thereabouts strength, but the EQ will be different and the richness will be different. What do I mean by richness? For me, richness means that I get more of a particular type of marble, right? So I'm getting more of those red marbles. And that means that I have more likelihood that I can taste and discern the, the taste of those red marbles in my tea. So richness is different from strength. Strength is just the total amount of marbles that you're collecting. Richness is 
how much of each variety of marble are you collecting, right? So if I'm collecting a thousand marbles here and a thousand marbles here, I'll have similar strength in terms of the overall amount of chemical compounds that I'm tasting, but I'm gonna get a much more pronounced character with the Gong Fu because I'm getting more of a particular type of marble because I've got more lanes. So in that 15 seconds, I'm getting those, let's assume those red marbles are easily extracted. I'm getting a lot more red marbles. The balance is different. So therefore the EQ is gonna be different in terms of the taste, but also the richness is gonna be different too. So that's how the leaf to water ratio affects the richness. In other words, richness for me is being able to taste in higher definition, right? Because what I'm doing is, is tasting more of a particular compound or a particular set of compounds. And that means that I can discern them more clearly, that they're much more clearly defined when I'm tasting them, which is why when I drink, I can really taste individual uh, uh, flavors and aromas much more clearly when I have a larger leaf to water ratio. Okay, so I hope that this has given you a clearer understanding of what I mean by the differences between strength and richness. That richness is much more about definition. And if you think about it, then because you're gonna be collecting a different set of marbles with the extended brewing time, because the gates are open longer, so some of the more irregular um, marbles are going to be crossing that finish line compared to this one. Because remember, the inclination is the same. We're brewing with the same temperature here. So with this one here, you're gonna get a different set of compounds coming out compared to this one. And so what's happening is that the EQ of the taste changes, and also you're getting a kind of blurring of multiple infusions into one tea, right? Whereas with this one, because you're doing much shorter infusions, you're kind of taking a snapshot of the uh, taste of the tea as the water enters the leaf. As that extraction process happens, you're getting more of a kind of stop motion effect where you're taking a much clearer, high definition snapshot of the character of the tea versus this one here, which is like a long shutter speed, more blurred uh, uh, picture because of the fact that you are keeping the gates open for longer and it's extracting a whole mix of different things. So you're getting more of a blurred, long shutter speed um, uh, taste of the tea. So high definition, stop motion, very quick shutter speed. So very, very clear images versus this one here, much more blurry, a little bit more of a, a kind of uh, blended infusion which is a lot less clear. So let's run through how leaf to water ratio affects the experience of the tea. So what we've said is that given the same parameters, in other words, the same brewing time and the same temperature, that more leaf is gonna make stronger tea, that more leaf is gonna make thicker tea with greater viscosity, it's going to make tea with longer finish, it's going to make tea which is richer in terms of its high definition of flavors. And even if you try to extend the brewing time using less leaf, then what you're doing is essentially creating a more blurred image of the tea versus the high definition, short shutter speed of the larger leaf to water ratio. Also, obviously more leaf means more lanes, means more marbles, which means that you can get many more extractions out of your tea leaves. So you can get lots more infusions out of larger leaf to water ratio. You'll also obviously require shorter brewing times. Now that is advantageous. And one of the key advantages of Gong Fu brewing is the shorter brewing times. So if we look back at the conclusions that we made from the previous video, you can see that some of the let's say more undesirable characteristics potentially of shorter brewing time is negated with larger leaf to water ratio. So for example, the thinness of the tea, the uh, fact that you've got a shorter finish of the tea, the fact that it's weaker in terms of its taste, all of those are negated by 
larger leaf to water ratio. So you can take away those potentially undesirable characteristics of shorter brewing time and you can keep all of the desirable aspects. In other words, the maintenance of high aromatics, the control of bitterness and astringency, because aromatics is related specifically to how long it's brewing, because those high aromatics will dissipate much quicker. Also, bitterness and astringency is related to which compounds are released. And if you keep the, uh, the uh, gate open for a short period of time, you are going to get less of those bitter astringent compounds. So you can control the bitterness, you can control the astringency, you can hold on to those high notes whilst making thicker, stronger, richer tea with a longer finish. So you get the best of all worlds if you increase the leaf to water ratio. Are there any downsides to increasing the leaf to water ratio? And is there a point where it is too much tea? Of course there is. One of the downsides of larger leaf to water ratio is that your brewing times need to be a little bit more accurate. You need to pay more attention. Because of the fact that you've got many, many more lanes there, you can over extract tea a lot easier, right? So you've got to have more intention, have a little bit more focus when you're brewing because five seconds, 10 seconds, either way is gonna make more difference than if you have a less amount of leaf and smaller amount of lanes. You can have too much leaf so that there's not enough water to actually surround the leaf and extract it evenly. This is often the case with ball roll doulongs. If you put too much leaf in because it's deceptive, they all open up and suddenly you open the lid of the guy one and you know when you're pouring the water over, the water doesn't even reach the top of the leaves. This happens often with me because I load up my guy one. Again, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It means that you're not gonna get an even extraction, but sometimes that's quite nice. Halfway through the session, you can kind of turn your leaves over so that you're moving them around so that they're extracting at different rates. It's not ideal when you are really trying to get to know a tea. Another downside is simply having so much leaf that you can't actually physically pour the tea out quickly enough and you are gonna have uh, over extracted tea. So if you have so much leaf that the time it takes after you filled up the, the pot or guy one, put the kettle down, put the lid on, poured it out, if there's too much leaf that even in that short period of time of flash brewing, it's over extracting, then obviously that's too much leaf. Similarly, um, because of the fact that these gates are open for very short periods of time, you want some of those irregular compounds to come out. You want to taste some of that sometimes, right? And so if you have too short a brewing time, then the EQ balance is, can be undesirable. You can want a little bit more bitterness. You can want a little bit more astringency. So sometimes you can have too much leaf. That means that you're brewing for such short periods of time that you're not getting the EQ balance that you want. Obviously, there are practical considerations to, to think about as well. Using more leaf is gonna cost more. So you've gotta think about how much leaf you want to use um, and the expense of that tea. And also, because a large amount of leaf means you're gonna get lots of infusions, if you don't have the time to have all those infusions, let's say you're having tea first thing in the morning and then you need to rush off to work so you don't have time for a full session, then it's not really cost effective. It's not really, uh, it's not really getting the most out of the leaves by using a high leaf to water ratio because it's, you know, you're not gonna get all the infusions that you can out of them. Now you can come back to them afterwards. I've done a video about how to store your leaves in between infusions, so you can do that. Whenever I brew, I, being a tea seller, have the luxury to just always brew Gong Fu style, but that is a consideration for all of you guys out there. So this is how leaf to water ratio affects the quality of tea, but overall, more leaf to water ratio is pretty much always gonna result in higher quality tea. You're gonna taste with higher definition, much more character in the tea than if you brew with less leaf, even if you brew for longer periods of time. That 
I promise you, is one of the biggest changes you can make in your brewing that will radically improve your tea tasting experience. Right, before I go, I'm very conscious of the fact that I promised you in, our, in my previous episode that I was gonna show you a way to brew sip spring oolong or any green oolong in a different way that I think brings out different characters in the tea. I call this method of brewing arc brewing. I am not gonna go through the theory of arc brewing in this video because this video is too long. I will be doing it in future masterclasses, but I'm gonna be leaving you guys with some homework. You can practice arc brewing yourself so that you can get your own opinion about the differences that it makes so that when you watch that video, you are already armed with your own experience. What is arc brewing? Well, what I'd like you to do is to take three brewing vessels that are identical, if you have them. If not, you're gonna to have to separate these out and do each brew differently, which is possible, but try to do them very quickly after one after the other because the time that the tea is left sitting is gonna affect your ability to discern the differences. So ideally, take three brewing vessels of the same shape, size, and material, and then take sip spring or any green oolong will do but sip spring is what we've been practicing on and you put the amount of leaf that you would like we always recommend something in the region of about six grams per hundred mil of water for these kinds of ball rolled oolongs give them a quick rinse in 95 degree water that's 205 fahrenheit quick rinse just to open up the leaves right so now you've got three vessels that are ready for brewing what I would like for you to do is to brew one of them at standard Gong Fu setting, which means 95 degree water, again, 205 Fahrenheit, for 20 seconds, right? Then I would like you to brew another one at 85 degrees Celsius, which is 185 Fahrenheit. Brew that one for 50 seconds, so 20 seconds, and 50 seconds. And for your last vessel, this is the one we're brewing arc brewing style, what I'd like you to do is get a bowl and fill that bowl with ice. Put that brewing vessel in the ice. Now, I've tested this many times, I've never had any breakages, right? But I'm not gonna be responsible for any breakages that happen um, in your house through the temperature difference but I've never had any issue with porcelain guy ones, so I don't think any of you will either. So if you take your guy one or your brewing vessel, you put it in the ice, so it's surrounded by ice, and then you hit that leaf with 95 degree water, so the same temperature of water as your Gong Fu brew, and you leave it in there to brew for 35 seconds, so halfway in between. So 20 seconds, 35 seconds, and 50 seconds, okay? So 20 seconds, 95 degree water, 35 seconds, 95 degree water, but submerged in ice or surrounded by ice, and finally 85 degrees for 50 seconds. If you do that and taste the difference, differences between them, make sure that you, you know, write them down so that you remember the differences between them. So now you've experienced arc brewing something that I've been experimenting with for quite a while. I think it's a very interesting way of brewing. You can try it with other teas. We're gonna regroup in future masterclasses and we're gonna do a whole episode all about arc brewing and how it affects that conceptual model. You can think about it yourself. How would that affect that conceptual model that we've started to create? That's it, tea heads. I hope that this video has given you more in-depth knowledge about leaf to water ratio and has spurred you to experiment further. If you made it to the end of this video, then make sure you hit it with a like. Follow us on all of our socials so that you don't miss out on any news and videos from Mayleaf HQ. If you're ever in London, then come visit us in Camden to say hi and taste our wares. If you have any questions, comments, or video ideas, then please fire them over. Other than that, I'm Don from Mayleaf. Thank you for being a part of the revelation of true tea. Stay away from those tea bags. Keep drinking the good stuff and spread the word because nobody deserves bad tea. Bye.